Good morning, friends. It's Bob again, and I want to continue our discussion on this Jesus moving toward and touching the untouchable and us moving toward and touching people who are isolated in their world as part of the way that you are, and I are going to be on mission with God and that we are going to make God's invisible kingdom visible in this world. Now, as we talked about this guy, this leper, this a man that's defined, I mean, usually it says here, a man, you know, covered with leprosy, but they would call him a leper. He's a man who's identified by his condition, by his illness. And I think a lot of times we do that, you know, here and now, but I want to draw your attention to a larger kind of picture that I think Luke is getting at in the larger scheme of things here. And that is that, that this man is isolated, that he is isolated uh, both by choice and by uh, not not by his own doing, that he's isolated by and and from society, he's isolated from people. He needs touch, and God reaches into his life in Christ. Now, this is as we head into this Easter season. We're just a couple of weeks away from Easter. As we head in this season, this is the place where the human race is. We are isolated and alienated from God that we are in a place where we are unclean, like him, that we are in the place where this isolation and alienation has left us bereft, has left us without God's touch. And every single human being has been made to exist and to thrive in the, under the touch of God and of others. And that, that Jesus, actually with this man sort of dawning on him, there's this healer guy, and I don't know who he is, but I know that people that, he, that have been around him have gotten well when they've been around him. Maybe, maybe, just maybe it's me. But think about this for a second, that the entire human race is in the place of this man. That with God, we are in the place where we are isolated and alienated. We are outside of him. Our sins have separated us from him. And what does God do in this whole thing? He doesn't just sort of build a bridge and then wait for us to cross it. He crosses the bridge and he comes all the way to you because he sees your innate value. He sees that you are an image bearer, that you are made in his image. You have always been valuable to him, even rebellious, even sinful, even dirty, unclean, alienated, whatever you want, however you want to define that. Even in all that, he sees you. And what does Jesus do in this? Instead of just sort of giving a drive by and saying, hey, be well, be clean. And, and the guy all of a sudden is healed. Instead, he goes into the man's world. He comes into your world. He takes on flesh to come into our world, to come close to us. That's what Jesus did. The sinless one came into our world and he came and touched us in our condition to bring his healing to us, to bring his forgiveness to us, to bring his restoration into our souls, to bring us into that place where we're restored to him. And that means that we're truly restored. So instead of Jesus just looking at you in your place, no matter what is going on with you, he comes near to you. He enters into your world. He comes close and he brings his touch in that closeness. Today, would you let Jesus bring his touch into your world? Would you let him now come in and and, and speak his words of cleansing? Some of you are caught in a place where you are just devastated by some mistakes and some sins. And these just continue to haunt you. And Jesus just reaches into your world and he says, there, be clean. I forgive you. You've repented. You've confessed. I forgive you. Now receive. It is my will for you to be clean. It is my will for you to be free of this. Now let me in and let me do this. You and I were separated and alienated from God, and we are no longer. He has come near to us because he loves us. Receive that today and walk in that love that he has for you today. Thanks so much for joining me. I love you. God bless you.